Hello. Hopefully you're well on your way to a successful hip or knee replacement outcome. For those of you who don't know me, I'm sure all the patients know me, but you may have some family or friends who are with you seeing this video for the first time who don't know me. I'm Lowry Barnes, the orthopedic surgeon who, who performed your hip or knee replacement. This is Marty Bushmeyer. Marty is an advanced practice nurse who works with me. Many of you probably talked to her on the phone um, when your surgery was actually scheduled. Marty helped in the operating room with your surgery as well. We think it's very important that patients know exactly what's been done for them and what they need to do to get a successful outcome. I know that you've all had lots of good information. You and your coaches have been part of Joint Academy, a premier total joint program for the state of Arkansas. As I'm sure you can tell, St. Vincent's is totally committed toward the joint replacement patient and the care thereof. They have met, gone to great lengths to make sure that you have a good experience while in the hospital and that you know exactly what to do when you go home. Because of that, they have helped produce a great video to help you know what to do when you go home. Hi, my name is Andra and I'm the Joint Academy Coordinator. Pain management after joint replacement surgery is very important for your recovery process. This is a major surgery and some pain is to be expected. Our goal is to keep your pain management under control during your hospital stay and to teach you how to manage your pain at home. It is very important to communicate to your nurse to your, about your pain level. This is the pain scale that you will use to rate your pain. Zero is no pain and 10 is the worst pain possible. Everyone's pain perception is different, so communicating to your nurse about your symptoms will help in deciding what the best pain control measures to take. Efforts to control your pain started even before your surgery when you spoke with the anesthesiologist about pain control options following surgery. Two options are available. Some patients will have a PCA pump while others will have an epidural pump. Both of these pumps have a button to push that will administer pain medicine. Both of these pumps and the pain medicine used in them have certain side effects associated with them, such as itching and nausea. Your doctors have already ordered medicines that will help with these side effects, so be sure to communicate to your nurse about your symptoms so that the appropriate medicine can be administered to help with those side effects. On the first day after surgery, our goal is to transition patients to oral pain medicines. Oral pain medicines are ordered usually every four hours as needed. Your nurse will be monitoring your pain level, but will not automatically come in and give you medications, oral pain medicines, every four hours. So it's important to let her know about your pain level. Remember, it's important to not let your pain get out of control. If your pain level escalates, then it will take more pain medicine to control your pain and longer for that medicine to work. It is important to remember to coordinate your pain medicine to be taken before any activity such as physical therapy. Certain side effects are associated with pain medicine such as nausea and constipation. It's important to eat something before you take pain medicine to help prevent the nausea, even if it's just a few crackers. We will start you on a stool softener while you're in the hospital to help prevent constipation. We also recommend once you go home to continue taking a stool softener daily while you're still taking the oral pain medicines. Please stay in communication with us while you're in the hospital so that we may help you with your pain management. If your pain medicine is not working, please let us know as there are other options for pain control available. This is a device that you will be given after surgery. It is called an incentive spirometer and it is a breathing exerciser. It is very essential for patients who have had surgery to use this device regularly as it helps to expand the lungs and get good oxygenation throughout your body. Normally when you are walking you are getting good inhalation and exhalation throughout your body. But after joint replacement surgery you are not doing this as well, especially while you are laying in bed. So it's important to use this device. Using this device can be useful for preventing complications like pneumonia, but it is also important to get good oxygenation to your tissues to promote good wound healing to your surgical site. Here's the explanation of how to use the incentive spirometer. You want to exhale fully before your initial inhalation. You inhale slowly through the inhalation tube until the blue piston rises in between the blue arrows. The large blue piston will also rise slowly 
and gradually. Hold your breath at the end for a few seconds and then exhale fully. Perfect. Hi, my name is Laura and I am one of the physical therapists that you guys are going to have the pleasure of encountering during your stay here with us at Joint Academy. What I'm here briefly and quickly to cover is what it means to get therapy while you are here in the hospital recovering from your hip replacement. First things first, therapy will be every day, twice a day. It'll be once in the morning and then again in the afternoon. Your therapy will consist of exercises, walking, reviewing your hip precautions, and any stair training that we might need to do to get you in and out of your house safely. Now I'm gonna talk about two pieces of equipment that are gonna be important in your recovery from your knee replacement. The first one being your immobilizer. This will be on your leg when you wake up from surgery. This will be worn all the time, especially when you are walking and when you are asleep. The next piece I want to talk about is this machine right here. It's your CPM, which stands for Continuous Passive Motion. You might also hear it referred to as your knee bending machine, but this is what we're talking about, the CPM. This machine will start the day that you have surgery. It will then stay with you in the room during the duration of your stay here with us at Joint Academy. We will ask you to be in it daily, and it will also go home with you. First thing I want to kind of point out, and probably most importantly, is that when you are in this knee bending machine, you should never have on your immobilizer. Your immobilizer keeps your leg straight. CPM wants your leg to bend. Do not wear your immobilizer with your CPM machine. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you at Joint Academy. If you're planning to have a total joint replacement here at St. Vincent Joint Academy, then your discharge planning starts right now. Hi, my name is Carol and I'm with Care Management and we're here to help you with your discharge planning home from the hospital. Your discharge planning team has the responsibility of working with you and your coach while you're here in the hospital to ensure that your discharge planning services are arranged and complete before you discharge home. We believe that in order for you to have optimal outcomes with your surgery, you must have optimal discharge plans in place that are tailored and specifically designed to meet your needs. It is very crucial that you have a clear understanding of, of what your discharge plans consist of. We will also assist you with identifying any environmental and social barriers that may interfere with you being able to get the appropriate discharge services arranged for you. A good example of this is inadequate or lack of transportation to and from outpatient physical therapy appointments and the lack of social support due to the fact that you live alone. Now, discharge planning services include outpatient physical therapy, inpatient acute rehab, home health, physical therapy and nursing, DME, that is, walkers, crutches, canes, bedside commodes and sometimes skilled nursing facility placements. Now, the goal of all of our joint patients is to discharge home without patient physical therapy. At this point, you may have already discussed your discharge plans with your surgeon. This is called your pre-admission discharge plan. Now, depending on your progress, that plan may change by the time you're ready to go home. You've probably already heard that a successful total joint replacement requires a two-day stay in the hospital. If you're having a total knee replacement, you will be required to participate in daily outpatient physical therapy for two weeks post-discharge. Starting now, 
begin thinking about where you would like to go for outpatient physical therapy. Better yet, call or go by and visit the clinic and let them know you're having a total knee replacement. Some people even pre-schedule their first therapy appointment visit as soon as they know when they're having the surgery. Now, if you live in the local or metropolitan area, we will schedule your physical therapy at the Arkansas Specialty Orthopedics Clinic nearest you. If you live outside of the metropolitan area, we will schedule your physical therapy at the clinic of your choice. Now, if you're having a total hip replacement, that's different. You will not be required to participate in outpatient physical therapy. However, you will be given a, a home exercise program by our physical therapy department. You will use these exercises during your recovery from your procedure. And remember, your discharge planning team is here and available for you should you have any questions or concerns that may interfere with less than optimal discharge arrangements home following your procedure. My name is Michelle and I'm the orthopedic nurse practitioner and what I'm going to talk to you a little bit is about prevention, specifically prevention of blood clots. Patients that have joint surgery are at risk for blood clots because of that decreased mobility. Anytime blood sits on top of itself, there's a risk of a clot forming. So we have to do some things to make sure that we make that risk as little as possible. If you are a low risk type patient for blood clots, we usually use what are called active care devices. The active care devices are on the lower part of the leg around the calf and they gently squeeze every few seconds to squeeze the blood out of the calf so that blood doesn't have a chance to sit on top of itself and form a clot. Along with that we use an aspirin. Usually it's a baby aspirin which is the 81 milligram aspirin. The active care devices we recommend that you use for a minimum of 10 days but it can be used all the way up to that 14 day mark. Usually the best thing that we can recommend is wear those active care devices until you see your doctor for follow up and take those in with you and they'll take care of getting them back to the company for you. The baby aspirin is actually for a total of six weeks minimum. And at that point, a good discussion to have with your primary care doctor, if you're not already on an aspirin, is to ask them if they'd like for you to continue on the aspirin or to go ahead and stop. Since a baby aspirin every day has some good prevention uh, data to support that it prevents heart attacks and prevents stroke. If you are an intermediate or a high risk patient, on the other hand, and intermediate or high risk, meaning that you have some increased risk factors for blood clots, some disease processes put us at higher risk, or if you've actually had a history of blood clots before, then usually what we use for blood clot prevention is instead of the active care and the aspirin, we use either injections in the stomach of what are, are called low molecular weight heparins like Erixtra or Lovenox, or we may actually use Coumadin, or the other name for Coumadin is Warfarin, that actually also will prevent the formation of clots in a different mechanism. Depending on which one of those types of agents are used, it will determine how long the treatment is for. Generally speaking, for Coumadin, patients that have knee replacements, it's a minimum of three weeks, and for patients that have hip replacements, it's a minimum of four weeks based on how quickly patients generally get to a full activity level. If we use Coumadin, then Coumadin requires monitoring of the blood, so it's a, a little bit more intensive as a process for home care. And our case managers will work to set those blood draws up for you, and your primary care doctor generally will manage that blood as far as the levels of the blood to make sure that the dosing is correct. If we send you home on an injection of, for example, the Erixtra or the Lovenox, that does not require monitoring. So it really depends on what the best procedure is for you, which drug is utilized. 
The other side of that picture is if you're already on long-term Coumadin therapy for some other disease process, then generally speaking what we do is have you resume your home dosing and your home monitoring regimen. We have a, a few points to remind you of for home care. One of the things that's important to remember about home care is that we're going to send you home with something to help with your pain management program. We use ice packs while you're here in the hospital and we're going to continue to recommend that you use ice packs at home. And we'll go over the specifics of how to apply those ice packs before you're discharged home. In addition, we'll send you home with a prescription for a pain medication. That pain medication will be based on what works for you as far as the pain pills that work for you after we discontinue the, the pumps that we use for you and also what you tolerate. Keep in mind there are sometimes side effects that include constipation, that include sometimes nausea, and we'll work with you to try to make sure that everything's in balance when we discharge you home. Another important thing for consideration for home care is your wound management, your dressings. If you've had a hip replacement, we'll make sure that we are very clear on which type of dressing change that you'll need before you go home. If you've had a knee replacement, generally speaking, it's usually dry gauze four by fours over the wound with nothing underneath it with the Flexinet to hold it in place. Things that we need to be really, really cautious of and really watch for at the time of your discharge are any signs that there may be infection. Our joint replacement patients have a very, very low infection rate at our hospital, but we want to make sure that we catch anything very early. It's fairly common within that first five days of surgery to run a fever, even up to around the 101 range or so. That's usually not an indication of a wound infection. It's too early in the recovery process for that to be a, an actual wound infection. So we'd recommend that you take Tylenol, Advil, generally not Advil, but Tylenol for that fever. And we also would recommend that you continue to observe your wound and the area around the wound. Other indicators of infection can be increased swelling, increased redness, increased drainage, or increased pain. If you have any, any indication that any of those signs are present, contact your surgeon immediately to make sure that they want to see you or that they have any other recommendations for you. In summary, for knee replacement patients, generally speaking, we need to make sure that you have a preventive mechanism for blood clots. We'll go over the specifics of that prevention before you're discharged home. We'll make sure that you have a prescription for pain medication so that you can perform optimally in the physical therapy sessions that you have during your recovery process. We'll make sure that you have plenty of information regarding any potential side effects for those pain medications. It's important to use ice packs as part of that pain management program as well. For any signs of infection, you need to contact your surgeon immediately to make sure that we catch any problems early. And for patients that have knee replacement, mobilization is critical. The general recommendation from your surgeon is that you have daily outpatient physical therapy, which is five days a week. Our case managers will make sure that we set your first session up and help set you up on a track for success.